A very warm welcome to the 14th and final day of the Australian Open 2013 at the magnificent Melbourne Park. Rod Laver Arena is playing host to two final matches. Of course, tonight, Andy Murray in about three and a half hours will take on Novak Djokovic in a historic final. Murray looking to win for the first time in the Open era, his second major straight after winning his first, of course, at the US Open last year. And for Djokovic too, he's looking for three in a row. That'll be the first in the Open era. The last to do that, the great Roy Emerson, who won much more than that. Before that, we've got the mixed doubles championship match. The wild-carded Aussie pair, Yamila Gaidasova and Matthew Ebden, Never played together before here. It's just a text at Christmas time from Matt Ebden to Jan Miller saying, Have you got anyone to play with? Do you want to play? And the little word came back, Yep, let's play. And they're in the final. It's a fairy tale for them. First major final, as it is for one of their opponents, Frantisek Semak of the Czech Republic, playing with his fellow Czech, Lucy Hradecka who has uh, played in three previous major finals. So she is the experienced one. And talking of that, and talking about a legend when it comes to the doubles, five times major winner, Safru. Fru McMillan joining me, Chris Bradnam, to guide you through this final. Good afternoon, Fru. Uh, good day, as they say here to uh, everyone. Yes, I suppose uh, Australians particularly looking forward to it, because as you say, uh, an unexpected, really, finalist uh, team and uh, all hopes of Australia will be pinned on them as they were of course on the women's doubles finalists who were uh, equally as Australian didn't quite manage it there though did uh, Barty and Del Aco. we just hope these two can leading the way is uh, Hradecka and Shermak 36 years old the fella 27 is Lucy French champion in 2011, and that's what is up for grabs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on the, this Sunday, the Australian Open, the final day of the championship, it's the mixed doubles final. The Czech Republic, please welcome Lucy Kardeka and Francisek Sema. Wayne McEwen, the referee, leading them out. And their opponents from Australia. And as Safru prompted me, the last all Aussie mixed doubles champions here, Scott Draper and Sam Stozer in 2005. And of course, that was when Scott Draper was looking to become a pro golfer. He qualified for the Australian Open, and had to hot foot it from winning the title to go try and play golf. That was some story back then, Fru. I would say he was reasonably relaxed, which is not how I imagine these two are feeling at the moment. One of their biggest tennis days of their lives. They certainly won't be playing before a packed audience, but I don't think that'll matter. The hearts will be beating very rapidly, and uh, there might well be some early nerves. They're playing a, a more uh, experienced team. It's a best of three set match. If it gets to one set all, they will play a champion's tie break as a third set. So that is the first to 10 points by a margin of two. The first two sets are normal tie-break sets. Got a lovely day for it. It's uh, quite warm, but uh, without being sweltering at all. Not a great deal of humidity. humidity. And uh, whilst there's wind outside, there always seems to be, it doesn't really seem to be affecting play too much uh, down on the court here. The Davis Cup squad now, Matthew Ebden. He's 25 years old. Born in Durban. Hello. Through part of the world, this now lives Angela. in Perth. She's going to do the coin toss. Hello, this is Angela. She's going to do the coin toss. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, same condition. Any questions? Angela, here you go. One of the hot shots. The spin of the coin. Is it? Is it? You're serving? This time? Okay, can we have just a picture with Angela, please, over there? Thank you very much. Aussies are going to serve. One for the scrapbook. 
Good looking quartet, aren't they? Mm. South African, understandably, the uh, most handsome of the four. <laughs> South African born, that is. Very much an Aussie. I see his uh, favorite team is the Wallabies. Understandably, a South African born chap who's moved to uh, Western Australia and lo loves rugby. So, ladies first, Yarmila Gajdasova, 25 years old, 5 foot 7, 1 meter 74, born in Bratislava in Slovakia, lives in Melbourne and gained Aussie citizenship on the 23rd of uh, November 2009. There are the current conditions. Magnificent. She uh, is currently ranked 166 in the singles, has been a top 25 player though in 2011. All the trophies here are magnificent. Wildcard here in the singles, lost to Vic Meyer first round, lost in the first round of the doubles as well, and last year struggled with uh, left ankle and left wrist injuries, but has won a couple of titles. Guangzhou in 2010 in singles and Hobart the following year, the two years that she ended the year in the top 50. And here's Lucy Kradetska, 27 years old, 5 foot 10, 177, born and still lives in Prague. 15 doubles titles from 25 finals, including the French with uh, Klavachkova. She's currently ranked four in the world. This man has won 29 doubles titles with six different partners from 49 finals. He's ranked 33 in the world, but he's been a top 15 player a few years ago. And in his first major final, as I said, he's never been beyond the round of 16 in doubles majors since his debut here 12 years ago. And he was a hockey player until he was 11 before he uh, focused his attention on this magnificent sport. The Czechs seem to great, uh, have a great affinity for hockey, don't they? Even the great uh, Yaroslav Drobny, who won the French and Wimbledon in 1954, was an Olympic hockey player, and all the Czechs really take to it. One double titles for Guy de Sova. She's been as high as 31 in the world in doubles, currently at number 40. And lives here in Melbourne. Having moved from Slovakia. And in the chair in command of this big summer's final at a Grand Slam. From Nice en France, we welcome Monsieur... Pascal. Three doubles titles from Matthew Ebden. Two with Ryan Harrison. Although here they lost in the first round. Well, they made the quarter-final of the French last year. Losing to Mernier and Nesta. And we've got a Frenchman. The privilege of chairing this mixed doubles final. Pascal Three Maria. Minutes. He said he was going to speak to Margaret Court, Matthew Ebden, because he's been mentored by her since a junior. And although he said she won her 62 majors some years ago, she knows all about playing big matches and preparing for them and has had a chat with her prior to this final. Yes, Evelyn uh, attended the same church of which, uh, of course, she is uh, the pastor in uh, Perth. Uh, really taken to uh, Christianity as Margaret Court since uh, she left uh, the tennis scene but one of the very greatest players of all time so no doubt uh, some good advice she's been here in attendance and she'll be a special guest at uh, Wimbledon this year Super, it's, it's great to see the greats attending isn't it? It is and it's it's so good too to see the uh, the majors remembering the champions Two minutes. I just wish perhaps it could be done a little bit more at, at more ordinary tournaments if I may call them that I think there's a role to be played you know Queen's Club for instance to bring in some of the some of the old players I know they have a, a veterans event there but just bring somebody on court and highlight uh, he or she Virginia Wade for instance could be brought on court uh, one of the great players uh, of the past, Roger Taylor. Just to teach uh, also current players and uh, to remind them of the respect they should have for the older generation, the those who paved the way for them. Checks the undoubted favourites here, but uh, the Australians will be buoyed, one imagines, by their home crowd. If Stozer and Draper could win it, I should say uh, that Guy Sover and Ebden 
or in alphabetical order, Abdon and Guy de Sova might be able to win it. I should think it'll be quite a battle. And your career in the mixed, through who your regular partners, the majors that you won, and give, give the, the people watching at home an education on how you should approach and play mixed doubles. <laughs> well, it used to be far more uh, of a male-dominated sport in those days because uh, uh, the women, some apart, I mean, people like Margaret Court and have rattled over and Billie Jean King apart, one could take greater advantage of them. So if, if you sort of had a, a bit more of a killer instinct in, in mix, you had some success. Um, I must admit, I think my mixed doubles partners actually had a bit more success, a bit more killer instinct than I did, but it sort of it rubbed off on me. Played with uh, Judy Taggart a lot and Annette Van Sale, with whom I won my first major, the French, and then uh, for many years, of course, played with Betty Stover, and uh, she and I won a couple of Wimbledon's, a couple of US, US Opens, uh, but approached it very seriously then. I think many more of the top players tended to play doubles and uh, not as many played mixed, but still quite a number of them played mixed as well. For instance, one US Open final lost to Billie Jean King and Phil Dent having had match point against them. So Billie Jean King played and Phil Dent played. Ray Ruffles and Billie Jean were our Wimbledon victims. So again, top players were involved in the game. And it, it has become a lesser event, and we even noted here for some years during the Australian Championships, which they were called before it went open, uh, there, w there was no mixed doubles event. Yeah, it's very true. From uh, 1970 right the way through to it starting again in 1987. So actually in the open era, in fact. Yeah. Tennis having uh, turned professional, become open in 1968. There were pros prior to that period, but uh, they had to go and apply their own trade and small uh, gymnasiums and tennis halls around the world and uh, once it opened up in 68 of course it then became a really great contest wherever except as we have to say the mixed doubles here at the Australian not played for some years and I think too what it does for the lesser players it gives them uh, the opportunity to build up confidence, which they might not gain from playing singles and uh, doubles. Well, to be in the locker rooms, last day of a major, that's pretty special. Very different. So the final of the mixed doubles at the Australian Open 2013 on the 14th and final day. Men's singles to look forward to in a few hours, but let's enjoy the mixed first. Hradetska Zermak of uh, the Czech Republic against Gaida Sova and Ebden, the wild-carded Aussie duo, who begin. Did you ever have a female partner that wanted to serve first, Fru? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> and would you have let them? Uh, possibly. I, it could have been debated because uh, sometimes people have great objections to particular ends. Bit lucky. 15. Radetzka, of course, uh, two hands on both sides, although she does uh, play the occasional single-handed forehand. Oh! No one's really sure, but there's still no challenge. And remember these Aussie pair have never played together before. That's some super wins. First round they beat uh, Lizicki and Frederick Nielsen, the Dane who won Wimbledon last year with Jonathan Murray on that in straight sets. Then they beat the runners up of the mix last year, Vesnina and Pays, the number two seed, in straight sets. Oh. Oops. Then they beat the fifth seeds, Petrova and Bupadi. That's a terrific mixed doubles pair. 
13-11 in the Champions tiebreak final set, having dropped the second set. And then Shvedova and Istomin in straight sets to make the final. That is some run. It is. If you think about it, it might actually make them favourites. And considering the way Fredetska smashed there, I think she might get a few more lobs. She looked up at the sun, but I don't think she could really blame it. Well, you think of the smash and then the air shot on the volley. <laughs> you might have had a potent lunch. Yes, because this wasn't hit uh, particularly hard by Ebden, the mm. forehand volley. When you think of the Bryan brothers' reactions last night in the men's doubles final, that was extraordinary, their performance. It's good play by Cermak, really, uh, expecting Ebden to cover the centre of the court. Now, of course, it'll be game point. Receivers choose as to who's going to return the sudden death point at Juice, which is played in the mix these days. It's gone to the man. This has all taken its cue from uh, World Team Tennis in the 1970s when this was introduced. Well done. Extra responsibility, the man will finish breaker to make the final. Fifteen. So both pairs have got some bragging rights with the results. First double. Early nerves, perhaps. Slightly trickier end to serve from this. Uh, southern end of the court, first thing in the day. Not that it's first thing here, but earlier on. She's looking a, a little shaky uh, up high, isn't she, Radetzka? So she may get uh, well get uh, quite a few more of these, as I said earlier, given the very poor smash. Thirty four. Looking a little tight, isn't he? Looking a little nervy. The half volley wasn't played with uh, great authority early on, and this uh, forehand volley is poor. Two break points. Changes the psyche, doesn't it? The deciding point. <laughs> yes. You get to love four, so you got four break points. There's one. Now will Ebden take the other one as well? Yes. Yes, I think generally the, the man will take it uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, certainly very often the man is the better player. And secondly, it is thought that not as many big serves can be directed to the left court. So often on the right court, the, particularly with the man serving, you can use that wide serve. Wow. Terrific. Yes, the perfect response. Almost hitting inside the ball and getting the ball to swing away from Ebden. 
It takes some doing, particularly to uh, clock 196 kilometers, 122 miles an hour. He's the tallest man on court, Chermak. Six foot four, one meter ninety-three. Yes, Radetzka swung wide, so using the single hand. In fact, I think she could have actually used the two hands there, which I think really she should be trying to do most of the time. Happy. This team is not so much a, a, a touching team, but the Australians certainly feel the necessity, really, of clapping hands, as it were. Is it just touching hands? Not sure what they might call it. Oh, dropped in the crowd. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she probably looked up, saw the drop catch, and you know, resulted in the double. <laughs> what are you going to say about funny? <laughs> Shane Warne, when he was watching in the uh, supporters area here earlier on in the tournament, had, the ball was coming right at him, and he had to make a decision to lean <laughs> forwards down in front of the advertising boards, but he caught it one-handed. That uh, produced quite a bit of amusement. played. In fact, I think it was Shane Warne who in the Ashes series in England, that England won and it was decided in the last test dropped Kevin Peterson. And, uh, it was a howler, wasn't it? Was it? A, it was a real howler. And I'm surprised some wag in the stands didn't remind him of it. <laughs> Stronger servers on the uh, women's tour, kind of so. But uh, that hurts. Two double faults in a game. I think she uh, got quite a sort of a loose, long swing on the serve. I think she needs to sort of do a bit of uh, aiming for the middle of the block. She's got enough pace. Just needs some accuracy. Two break points for the Czechs. I think he expected it, Ebden. It was just too hot to handle. And first stroke. Well, let's hope she's learned from uh, her opponent's failings. Well, he went a fraction early, to say the least, there, Shermak. And Guy de of course, will be uh, very intent on making up for a couple of doubles and the loss of serve. Good call. And again, he goes way early trying to protect the woman's serve. Sir Mac. So the shots down the line proving pretty beneficial for the Aussies. Maybe a good time for Sir Mac to move again here. Wouldn't want to be a fly on his window with a volley like that. Oh, 
not a bad hit serve, but just a very good angled return with uh, Cermak as tall as he is with his long reach. Three break points. So two holds from the men, two breaks for the women. Not exactly the massed choir, is it? <laughs> Played. For the lower ranked players at this stage of a tournament, particularly a major. They must, they must half arrive. So where is everybody? <laughs> it must be a very strange feeling. Locker room's virtually empty. Strange but wonderful, knowing why. Well, possibly a mistake by Cermak there, playing his second shot uh, directly at Ebden. This one here. Fox of course. Casey Delacqua and Ashley Barty so close to a major for the Aussies, losing to Irani Vinci in the final of the women's doubles. Well, that's a first love game of this mixed doubles final. First point, sixth game. It's very stiff, the volley, isn't it? Of Cermak. Yeah, it's almost as if it's uh, been put together. Going to say we're taking him on and... Uh, Coming off the better. You thought with the comparative lack of reach on the other side of the court, she may have gone there. Well, we remember the big double he serves, so does he take a bit of uh, pace off this just to ensure? Brilliant. Well, he leant back on the shot, which obviously gave him just a little bit more time to uh, think about it on this uh, second forehand. And a little bit of indecision there. So I'm going as if to play the volley, but uh, far too late. Well, it's a fine return, and one really has to compliment Cermak, a pressureful uh, half volley. Close. 14, Yes, I think she was determining to, uh, had determined to do that on the previous, just uh, mishit it. That one, she hit very solidly and had it gone over, it would have been real trouble for the Czechs. Good save from Love 30. So the men holding again. 
Seems to enjoy that serve out wide, doesn't he? I think uh, Hebden might need to anticipate it next time a big point comes round to his uh, side. David Adams, Jared Palmer, Ellis Ferreira. It may bear some uh, reflection of uh, Ebden's country of birth with David Adams and De Swart winning the mixture, a South African team. But uh, very much uh, an, an Aussie now. As his guy to serve, of course. That's it. He's not timing his moves particularly well. The horse trainer would be a bit unhappy. <laughs> so important to get it just right. Four game points for the Aussies. Yeah. Well, it's not a bad hold for the first time for the... They still look very strained facially, don't they? And it's uh, showing, I think, in their tenors. The others uh, certainly look more relaxed. Certainly do. Maybe the Czechs need to uh, touch hands a few more Long times. <laughs> oh, there was a little tap there. Well needed here. Good play by Ebden, creeping in so that he can take the next shot in the volley. Only one, two behind seven second serves. The checks, and that's Ooh. not helping Ooh. the cause. Gifts four break points. They're calling it three, but it's four because of the deciding point. Yeah. Well, he was almost uh, likely to move there, so one can't blame Ebden really for assuming that he might cross and try and uh, help his partner here. First serves required, surely. Super return. So one, two down a break. Now five, three up to serve for the opening set, the Aussies. I didn't see them buckling their shoe at one, two, but they might well have. <laughs> Had to face a deciding point in his opening service game, the first game of the match, Ebden. Then he held to love. I'll be hoping for the latter on this game. Good start. Well, that's one of the reasons why on the uh, game point, the uh, left court will inevitably be the choice. Just 
just look the better team, don't they? They do. They are, I think. Lovely action shot. Hebden's got a good approach. He gets down very low on the return, down on the volley. And that serves a gimme. Four set points. Or left. Yeah. Two love service games in a row for Ebden. And that's Two terrific left. recovery. Well, Sermak, I think, has to make uh, a deep impression on this match. He's not uh, the dominating force, really, that I think he needs to be. Well, she must have played uh, a lot, lot better at the French when she won the doubles there because uh, she's really not showing great skill here at the moment. Perhaps it's just one of those days. So good. seem to have no doubt about it. Certainly landed very gently. Can't imagine there's been a mistake made here. Or has there? No. Two more break points for the Aussies. Two doubles in the game, three in all. To cover the wide serve. Fifteen. Serving twice in a row, Ebden. Of course, changing the order. He can do that at the start of a set. And you stay in that order throughout. Same as the returning pair, too. If you're having a bit of a bad day from the left court, you can switch to the right court, but only at the start of a set. And then throughout the new set. It doesn't often happen, that, does it? I've never seen it, I don't think. No, I've seen it happen once. I remember with Lutz and Smith, the great American doubles team. Bob Lutz always played in the left court, and uh, they switched once with he on, on the right court, playing with Smith. Well, 
That wasn't all that far from her, but uh, she was totally fooled by it. They just look flat, don't they? Just long. 14, and of course, in Australia, like in Britain, club tennis, most of it is doubles. So the two nations have always been good doubles players. Yeah, certainly applies um, in South Africa as well. well what tennis has played there now. Well, they are totally in control and bossing this mixed doubles final now. Remember, they were 2-1 down a break. They've only lost the one game since. Oh, there's a touch of uh, Wayne Ferreira about Ebden. Classy South African. In Melbourne. You seen him whilst you've been here? No, I haven't. No. Oh, a bit 50. of... Uh, the swinging serve of our own, that might just help. And she left it uh, too late. Well, it would have been difficult to deal with had it uh, been in the court, of course, because it uh, virtually stopped, but that wasn't his intention. Looking into the sun, I think this is the only thing that we can say, really. Well, that's when she's uh, at her best. And I imagine that's how she must have played much of the doubles on clay, winning most of her points from the back of the court. Well done. A bit of venom behind that. Just their second game won in the last nine played. And of course... Super touch at the net. Ebden's shown in this final. Of course, they have to keep their voices uh, down because uh, naturally the Czechs will understand uh, all their English. And I dare say a guy to serve him might understand uh, the Czechs. Ebden certainly wouldn't. Oh, that's a forte. Just having a look at the uh, line there, Guy de Sova, but uh, Radetzka far better, really, when she's uh, playing her ground strokes. Well, I think he was looking to be uh, 
very aggressive and try and get on top of the opponents there at Cermak, but just not quite able to accomplish it. Guy Deserver keeping a good length and hence the opportunity for Ebden to intercept. It's terrific. Really holding her end up. Yes, an ace not only to uh, the woman, but of course she's also aced Cermak here, which would be a real feather in her cap. Must win service game for Cermak. Two doubles in his last service game, remember. He's got to watch his feet too while he's serving. Well, Guy de Sova acknowledging, really, that she'd played to the wrong person. Not that Cermak's been outstanding on the volley, but surely at a time like this, at most times, you've got to play to the uh, woman at the net, particularly the person with a, a little lack of reach. Like good. That. Yeah. Fifteen. Really plays that forehand well off the back foot, doesn't he? Well prepared. Clever play, having played the previous one down the line. There might have been just that thought, uh, as far as Rodetsko is concerned, that he might go there again. So just a little late, really, in the backhand volley. Second ace for uh, Cermak. Three for the team. Well, he read it well this time. Just a bit of a swat again, wasn't it? The second one. Sure was. So the first deciding point game since the first two of the match. It's a biggie for the Czechs. This is a must-win point, surely. Hanging on, quite literally. It's won by Nick Kyrgios. He beat his best mate, Tennessee. Uh, Runner-up, the younger. Casey Delacqua, only 16, made final of the senior doubles. Ashley Barty. Ashley Barty, sorry, with uh, Delacqua. Thanks. Yeah, she looks uh, a real prospect, Ashley Barty. Ah, uh, here's a, a real, real significant point, surely. <laughs> wow.
Hand on hip for Cermak, says it all really. Well, she came a lot closer there, did uh, Radetzka. Obviously a lot happier with the ball coming straight at her rather than the, the wide serve. Just long. No call. So Hawkeye will uh, confirm. Yes, palm down from the uh, linesman. I think this is a trap door moment for a... thought it might have been in. No, it wasn't. Wow. I think the lever would have been pulled. Hmm. Not a good call from the base linesman. Remember the wonderful tournament they used to stage at Wembley in London indoors. They had men as ball boys. And they had rackets, all the strings taken out with fishing nets on them just to scoop them up. And uh, if linesmen there made a bad call, they were instantly replaced. You must have played that many times for I did. Wow. Well, you must have thought it was a lead. Nobody else did. So deciding point, game point, break point. Huge point. Can they turn this match around now, the checks? That is big. Solid in the forehand volley. Why did he play to the man, I ask there? They've been smiling and chatting all the way through by comparison, haven't they? Took much more at ease. But I thought prior to the match there'd be a lot of tension. But it's the Czechs, really, who've uh, been strained. Well, Radeska is certainly doing a bit now from the back of the court. So, Max, an intervention here, not good enough having to play a forehand volley from the backhand side. <laughs> Needed to be a bit more elastic even than that. I don't think Guy Deserve is quite used to playing uh, even at this advanced stage of the tournament with somebody who takes as many of the smashes. Very wisely, of course, called by Ebden. Oh! They'd love the insurance of a double break, wouldn't they? Radetzka's held one of her three service games, so constantly under pressure. Oh. And gifted three insurance points here. And the smile, well, it wasn't when they came out. And the frown has deepened.
He was looking at the hospital menu there, wasn't he, Ebden? <laughs> yes, wisely uh, turned his back on this. A little bruised, but uh, make no difference if they win the match. So deciding point. Yeah. Has to be woman to woman, I guess. They hang in again. Keeps the pressure on. The text wouldn't have cost much, would it? From Ebden to uh, guide us over to say, do you want to play in the mixed? And guaranteed as a pair, 67,500 Aussie dollars as runners up minimum. 135,500 Aussie dollars to share for the champions. Well, if the Czechs have got to advance further, this is uh, obviously the point at which to do it. Not this particular point, but this game. Hmm. <laughs> really needed that. Yeah, she can see throwing the ball up just a little to the right so she can hit uh, around the ball. Is he going to change his position on the court? No. Well, big, pretty flat, deep. Ebden apologised for not helping her out. It's tough to go on a second serve, though, against the man, isn't it? Well done. <laughs> He'd have held his breath for a second, wouldn't he, Ebden? Not putting the smash away. Well, unfortunately for Radeska, playing this right in the end, right into the hands of Ebden, just not able to get the angle, trying to play a two guy to Sova, obviously. Two chances to take a set and 5 3 lead for the Aussies. Deciding point. Third game, fourth game in a row. Well, she's surely got to use the swinging serve here. What's the big question for uh, Radeska? Is does she go down the line? Is Ebden going to move? And for the body serve. Brilliant! What a time to come alive. Well, she's certainly been uh, much improved off the ground, and uh, this undoubtedly the biggest shot for her thus far in the match. This should give the Czechs uh, a real boost.
Pretty good fielder too, Gunners. Yeah. Uh, Radetzka. She meant that. No, she's been working on that all day. She's using that uh, two-handed shot, bring it back around. The advantage the two-hander has. Fifteen. That serve uh, virtually every time to Ebden, doesn't he? I like her outfit, I must say. Kind of service. Oh. Made it. Oh. Cermak right left it. I thought that was in. A little bit of a miss hit may uh, determine. Mm -hmm. oh, just about. That's you. <laughs> Yes, fine volley, just inside the line, but th certainly the right place to play it, rather than volleying back to Ebden. Now, oh! oh, if she gets a backhand, she drill it right at Radetzka again. Three games in a row for the Czechs. Ebden's going to have to hold serve. To... Hasn't been broken yet, Ebden. Had to save a deciding point last game. 4-5, second set. That's the way, says Ebden. She really does just keep swinging at it as guide a server. Too good. Between them, they've won 44 doubles titles, the Czechs. The Aussies? Four. Second time she's uh, been caught out by that uh, one right at the body. Well, he's pulled the socks up quite a bit as uh, Sir Mac, but this certainly was very makeable. Should at least have made the opponents play. I think they may be feeling just a bit nervy, the Australians. Yeah. 
Five all, second set. Five games in. Yeah, the two women's service games. Yes, yeah, trying to return this uh, with one hand, Radetzka. Not quite sure why. I think she was just. had no idea where he was going to be serving. Oh, read that well. Yes, that's what she could have used on the return of serve. That's what she should have used. So both the forehands and delivered, and uh, so has the backhand. Monica Sellers' style of play, of course, except Sellers was a left-hander. Played. Well, if he did have something in his eye, he did pretty well. She went to play a single-handed uh, attempt at the lob there. Not the control with the single hand she has with the two. Oops. 15, 13. Three doubles apiece now for the Czech team. Six in all. So where is uh, Sermak going? Oh! Oh! That's you. He's lost his total smoothness for the moment, has Ebden. Just as well, that was an ace all the way. For the Elsies. Oh boy, oh, dear, dear. Two doubles in the game again. Semek started the set with just that. Two break points for the Aussies. The Armilla guy to Sova will serve. Second chance. Wow. <laughs> Made in Aussie the net. Well, I wonder if she uh, intentionally kept away from the uh, Radetzka forehand, seeing that that was the winning shot when she last served, to break her serve. Two points from it. Mighty close that serve. Surprised they didn't challenge. Well, they're all smiling now. They got four championship points. Ebden just taking care of the business. Where are we going for dinner tonight? I think is what he's saying. <laughs> Oh, 
Sportif. Si, 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 si. One of his best returns. That's not. That's got to be tension. Two championship points gone. Two remain. They're just buying a bit of time here, I think, just to steady themselves. Well, I think also the, it's, it's a good move by the partner to challenge it, as if to say, well, it was actually pretty close. And even I thought it might have been in. I'm pretty sure he knew it was out. Bit of uh, support. Still the two points that... It's long. They've got it. The first all Aussie mixed doubles combo to win the Australian Open title since Scott Draper and Sam Stozer in 2005. They'd never played together before. It was a text at Christmas from Matthew Ebden. Do you fancy playing? Yep, was the response. They've won the title. Oh, some Christmas present, wasn't it? Champion. Biggest checks of their career, apart from, of course, the the great prize of a title at an open event. And ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to take a few moments to set up here on the Wobbly Arena for our presentation. Wonderful day for the pair of them. Just a shame that uh, Jan Miller's mother passed away last September and not able to share in this magical moment first major final too she's claiming the credit i think for it. <laughs> two players who are not exactly the broadest of australian speakers but nevertheless will uh, certainly claim this as very much uh, one of australia's own and undoubtedly the better team out there today wayne McEwen adding his uh, congratulations tournament referee the bear stats an hour and 13 minutes and overall they were the better team the checks got sort of going but yes the checks really only played well when they were behind one stage in the second set when they sort of knitted it together but otherwise uh, Radetzka and Cermak certainly not able to dominate as well as Ebden and Ebden really for most of the first set early in the second set was the best player on court And they've won the title, dropping just the one set. Beat some very, very handy pairs along the way, as we mentioned. They beat the runners-up here last year, Vesnina and Pace, in the second round, three and two. That was their most comfortable win of the tournament. I wonder if this is only the second time that a wild-carded... Uh, maybe the first time a wild-carded team has won a major event, but the second time a wild-card has won. Of course, Ivan Eva Isovic won Wimbledon as a wild-card. Mm. But I can't imagine it's, uh, it's happened much more than that. Jonathan, Mary and Frederick Nielsen won Wimbledon doubles as qualifiers. Equally remarkable. <laughs> Something to cherish. Lovely moment. Beautifully captured. One on each side just in case you missed the first. Could be the start of a wonderful relationship. Certainly you would imagine the mixed doubles for the next of the three majors this year. Delight for all the friends and family too. Peter McNamara has uh, been part of Ebden's team. McNamara McNamee winning here in 79, Wimbledon in 80 and 82. So he's had lots of good advice and support. Margaret Court, his mentor, remember. And Perth is proud. 
also is Melbourne. And I'm sure Bratislava too in Slovakia, the birthplace for Gaida Sova. Yes, little did they know. The surprising victors of the mixed. If they achieve nothing else in life, they'll uh, certainly remember this. This will be as much cherished as almost anything. It'll be interesting to follow their progress, particularly Ebden's. He's in the Davis Cup team now, hasn't he? Pat Raft has called him up. Yeah. He's just a very solid pro, he looks and seems. No major weapons, but uh, he'll work hard for you. Get that impression. Good teammate to have. So the presentation party being uh, gathered. Just the one match left now. The men's singles final tonight. Eagerly awaited, of course. Djokovic against Murray. Historic match. In about two hours from now. See that on Eurosport 1. British Eurosport 1. Hope to have your company for it. Craig Willis, the MC. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've just witnessed the penultimate match of the Australian Open Tennis Championship of 2013. And let's thank the four players for a wonderful display of mixed doubles here on the Rod Laver Arena this afternoon. Well done. We're joined for the presentation by the President of Tennis Australia, Mr Steve Healy, Mr Steve Wood, the CEO of Tennis Australia, our Tournament Director, Mr Craig Tiley, our Tournament Referee, Mr Wayne McEwen, and representing one of our outstanding sponsors, Jacobs Creek, we welcome Monsieur Julien Hemar, Managing Director of Pernod Ricard. Firstly, we'd like to recognise our chair umpire, and he is from France, Monsieur Pascal Maria. Thank you, Pascal. The job, as always, well done in the chair. And to our runners-up from the Czech Republic, let's welcome Lucy Hradeka and Fratisek Senak. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Matt and Jarka for a great match today, for a great week. They played very good. They deserve it. So, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, then I have to uh, thank uh, my partner Lucy, because she played unbelievable all two weeks, uh, and without her, I wouldn't be here for sure. I enjoyed every single match with her, as always, so thank you. Thank you, Lucy, for playing with me. Then I would like to thank my family, my wife, that they come such a long way with uh, our daughter, just uh, 13 months old, such a long way. Thank you. Uh, then I would like to thank, of course, uh, the main sponsors, Kia and uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob's Creek, because without them we wouldn't be here for sure. Thank you so much. Thanks. And then I have to thank all the people who's been working for this tournament. They made a great event, and for me it's uh, the best Grand Slam by far. And I always uh, love to come here, come back here again. So I hope we will see you next year. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Fratisek, and to you and Lucy. We hope you have a great year in 2013. Well, I was just looking at the trophy over there, and there's some great names of world tennis engraved upon the Mixed Doubles Championship trophy, and we're delighted to add these two to it. Jamila Gaitasova and Matthew Ebden. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hold it up. Uh, wow, where to start? Um, firstly, thank you to you know the Australian Open for giving us a wild card into the event. Without them, we can't even get to play. So thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you to my beautiful partner Yaka. She's, uh, you know, played amazing all week. Carried me through a lot of big, big points. So thank you to her. And thank you, of course, to you know Jacobs Creek, Kia, ANZ, and for everyone at the tournament. You know, you guys, this really is the Happy Slam Australian Open. You know, as, as Australians, it's incredible to play here. Yesterday being Australia Day, and uh, to win our first Slam title. Uh, here in Melbourne is very special, so thank you very much for coming out. And uh, finally, thank you to both our teams for, you know, on behalf of Yakra and, and myself, to you know, our wives and coaches and best friends up there, and to everyone supporting us on TV. And thanks to the crowd and, and everyone. We've had an incredible, incredible time the last couple of weeks, and we'll see you again next year. Thank you, Matthew. And again, ladies and gentlemen, to Matthew and Yaka, congratulations as our mixed doubles champion of the Australian Open Championship of 2013. Well done. Yes, and didn't they both speak very well, too? So that's it. It's just the one match left in just under two hours from now. Novak Djokovic, the world number one, looking for three Australian Open singles titles in a row. That would be history in the Open era. And Andy Murray, of course, the US Open champion, looking to win his second major in a row. And if he does that, that's also historic in the Open era, having won your first to win your next one at the very next attempt. So it's a historic final that awaits the singles, the men's singles, the remaining match of the Australian Open 2013. Guy de Sauver and Ebden are the mixed doubles champions. We'll see you in under two hours. Bye for now.